even doing an interview. <laughs> Kerry's just eating, <laughs> doing her macrame and, and what she's making her mum a, a birthday card. It's like, and yet I'm the one whose phone's dying and I can't charge it because I'd have to sit on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> when the phone runs out, so it's on 10%. We can do this. We can do this. Let's get straight into it then. I want to start by just saying congratulations on season two. It was as beautiful and as surprising as season one was. Were you overwhelmed by all the love and the connection that people had with Afterlife? Yeah, I've never had a reaction like it. And I don't just mean the size of the reaction. I mean, which was, again, I've never had anything that that big and constant it was like every single day thousands of tweets but that could be a reflection of the fact that you know netflix have got 170 million subscribers so i've never been on a platform that big and uh but my agent my agent got 300 letters that never happens and it was all about it was all about their personal story and people would come up to me on the street which usually happens and they say oh love the show or whatever but now they wanted to talk to me. They said, oh, I lost my brother three weeks before I watched it. And, and it really helped. And so you realise that everyone's grieving. And um, they liked seeing something about themselves on telly. Do yeah. you know what I mean? And that's, we all like that. Uh, and I suppose it's how it's done and how it's dealt with. And so, um, and I think we second guess the public too much. We go, oh, they can't take that. Oh, it's too depressing. I'm like, well, no. Real life, they've been through real life. That's, that's tough as well. Um, but yeah, I, I've, I was genuinely overwhelmed. And you know, you put that back into series two and I made it more about, more about sort of Tony's mental health and going through the seven stages of grief. And, and the one thing that we, we discovered with series two is that with the flashbacks with Tony and Lisa, the happier they were, the sadder it is now. Because you realise exactly what he lost. Yeah. You know, so uh, uh, it, was, it was interesting exploring the, the, you know, the, the relationship that, that's, that's no longer. You know? And also that, that, that really buys into the title of Afterlife as well. It's nice still learning things about Tony and, and Lisa and how no one can compete with her. Mm. So, but yeah. see, I loved it because I thought it was more than just that as well. Like it showed that love and relationships are at the centre of our universe, but it also showed us that we need to be more aware of others. And um, Carrie, there was a scene with you as Lisa where I just sobbed all the way through it, where you were in hospital and you were talking about the orderly who had BO and you were going to yeah. say it to him. You were going to say, you've got BO. And then you thought about why this man could possibly have BO. And when you thanked him for his work, it made him feel seen and appreciated. Do you feel that as, I know what we're going through right now is really tragic, but are we starting to see each other and appreciate each other? I think, well, there's a hope that we are. I mean, there's that dialogue is going on. I do hope so. I mean, there is definitely, you know, all the clapping on a Thursday for the NHS is a lovely thing. And it's, um, and the show Afterlife, you know, my character, is very dependent on the NHS and she's having all her chemo and all her treatment on it. And I suppose we're all valuing and reflecting on it yeah. right now. So I hope we can keep those values. Yeah. There's another theme that <laughs> we could be here for hours just talking about the themes because there's so many, but one that was really interesting was this theme of being needed. And quite a few times the line um, is uttered, being needed is a good thing. People find that as a burden. Why to you is being needed a good thing? Because it's one of the things that you tick. Um, uh, the great things of life and being alive is that without worth, it's nothing. You find that you, so many times that you see people, their spirits broken and they, cause they feel worthless. And so when you know, when, you, when you're needed, there's a lovely bit in them, um, one of my favorite films is uh, It's a Wonderful Life. And that starts with a man who's gonna commit suicide and an angel jumps in so the man has to save him. Now, that is like a metaphor for being needed. 
And so I think it's fundamental. I think if you, you could have everything, but if you don't think you're worth anything yourself, what's the point? What's the point? So um, I think it is one of the big five that you, that you tick in yeah. life. I, 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 am I need? I mean, you know, we know what happens to people when they get made redundant or, you know, it's like, yeah, you've got to feel that you're, you can still chew the leather, you know, otherwise, what's the point? Yeah. Now, this isn't a spoiler, but I feel like I have to give everyone this warning because going into afterlife, I just went, not the dog. Please, Ricky, don't do anything to the dog. <laughs> it's the one spoiler I'm happy. Uh, it's the only spoiler I will, I will do. The dog does not die. It, we, all need, dog, we all need to hear that. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's it, you know, some would say it's all he's got. And there's some, um, I've never said so often to <laughs> any actor or actress, you're such a good girl. <laughs> you're such a good, I say all, I love being with that dog. That dog saves Tony's life, literally and metaphorically. And um, uh, it's so real. And I just want him to be a dog. And uh, there's a lovely scene where I come home and he just brings, she brings me a toy. And I go, for me. And she sort of looks at me and I go, you're such a good girl. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so sweet. It's yeah. so, it's so real. Dogs, dogs save our lives, literally and metaphorically. Yeah. The, and again, I put that in the top five. Yeah. Of, of what, what's the point of life? Worth, dogs, wine comedy <laughs> well finally tony says um lisa was my greatest achievement i won at life what makes you two feel like you've won at life well it's sort of um that you know for me personally when i came up with the idea that you know what if you, if you lost everything you know is life worth living and then the next question was well what's losing everything well it's your it's your soulmate it's your it's your life partner. And um, there's a beautiful line that uh, Penelope Wilton says in series one. She says, um, uh, I'd rather live, uh, I'd, I'd rather live missing him than have him live missing me. So she's taken on all the grief and all the burden onto herself. Now me, I want to die first, but that's selfish. And I know it is, yeah. I still want to die first. <laughs> <laughs> And Lisa, for you, what's winning at life? It's same. It's relationships. Lisa, sorry, it's, Kerry. <laughs> it's all. It's a, it all is about relationships. That's when you are in crisis or when you're feeling vulnerable. It's only relationships that matter. Yeah. Well, guys, um, I could talk to you forever, but I just want to say, if I ever bump into you on the street, I don't want a selfie. I just want to give you a big hug. Oh. Thank you for this, because seriously, I get emotional talking about it, because it is one of the most beautiful things to actually be Well, that, that scene where, where Kerry talks about the porter, I was there on the day she was doing it, and I was, I was cracking up as well. So yeah. it's, that's normal. Yeah, well, listen, <laughs> thank you so much for this beauty that you put out in the world. Cheers, thank you. Thank you, thank you guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. And good luck with the card. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs>